What's up guys, it's Trevor with Embers Living. Today, we're talking fireplaces and stoves. Specifically, we're gonna focus on heating. What is the best fuel type to heat with? Is it gonna be gas fireplaces or stoves or inserts or electric or pellet? Or is it gonna be wood? But what's the answer? Only one way to find out. Let's get talking about it. Okay, so we're gonna break each fuel type into categories and talk about them to sort of simplify the process. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. If you're in the Denver, Colorado area, come visit our showroom today. Thumbs up, smash the like button, heart it on TikTok. What else do we gotta smash, Chris? Uh, subscribe. Subscribe, YouTube. do it all. Just click all the buttons, helps us out a lot. Okay, let's start with wood. We're gonna break this down into three categories. We're gonna talk about the ability to whole home heat, the power that they have. We're gonna talk about uh, the cost to run or the efficiency of this particular fuel type. And then we're gonna talk about lifestyle or ease of use. So let's start with wood. Now we're gonna talk about whole home heat, but before we do that, we have a specific thing we're talking about when we talk about wood fireplaces, because there's a couple different type of wood fireplaces. Chris, follow me over here. We're not talking about big open fireboxes like this. So if you have an open fireplace, don't think this video applies to you because these are super inefficient. It's gonna take all the oxygen out of the room. It's all of that heat's gonna run up the chimney. Not an efficient way to go. We're talking EPA certified sealed units, whether that's a stove, freestanding stove like this, inserts, show them a picture of an insert, or built-in factory firebox with a sealed front. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about wood heat. Okay, so let's talk about the ability to whole home heat. Can wood be your primary heat source? Absolutely it can. Whether you have a small cabin or a large grand room or a big house, this thing can heat the whole house. And you can see that just based on the size differences. It's usually dictated by the size of the firebox. You know, we have smaller stoves and larger stoves. These, the big ones can heat 3,000 square feet plus. The other advantage with them being a whole home heater, which is really nice with wood, is you're completely off the grid. So you're not dependent on the utility companies, you're not dependent on, uh, I guess electrical is the utility company, duh. But you're not dependent on those guys for power outages, anything like that. You can constantly and steadily heat your home without outside factors sort of cutting you off, if that makes sense. So that's one of the huge benefits to wood is the ability to be a whole home reliable heater. It's probably the most reliable out of all the categories we're gonna talk about. So that's a huge, huge plus with wood. Okay, let's talk about cost or efficiencies. Now this is where I'm starting to talk about it really depends on your particular lifestyle. So these things are EPA certified, so they are super efficient. Usually most EPA certified stoves are gonna give you seven to nine plus even longer, sometimes 20 hour burn times. So that means that they're extremely efficient. So if you load this firebox with wood, load it all the way up after you got a good fire going, um, you're essentially gonna be able to heat with that same load of wood for up to 20 hours, let's say. That's awesome. That tells me that it's efficient even if you're paying for wood. Now obviously from a cost to operate standpoint, if you live in an area, uh, a rural area or you just have uh, a lot of trees or, or wood on your property and you're not paying for wood, of course then it's a no-brainer to heat with wood because your fuel source costs zero except your time because you have to store, split, and stack it, um, season it, all those types of things which we'll get into in a second with lifestyle. But essentially your the ability to heat your house is costing you nothing but your time. So obviously that's extremely efficient. Now a lot of our wood customers are paying for wood and the cost of a quart of wood is gonna vary greatly depending on where you live, what type of wood it is, that kind of thing. But essentially, again, this goes back to individual needs. So the individual needs are really gonna dictate which one is best for you. And I'm just here to present sort of different lifestyles that are more beneficial per fuel type, if that makes sense. So one of the lifestyle benefits of wood or the benefits of wood from a cost to run standpoint is going to be uh, a lot of our East Coast customers are on oil. Uh, a lot of our rural customers are running pro propane. 
propane is ridiculous right now. <laughs> I have customers that have spent, they change out units because they're spending 800 to $1,200 a month just in propane, a month. You kidding me? You kidding me? That's a lot of money. I mean, you could, <laughs> you could in theory, get a quart of wood for less than that for the whole winter, let alone per month. So if you're on those fuel sources, obviously wood is something I would consider because you're, your costs to operate are gonna be considerably lower. Okay, so that's costs in a nutshell. I can't really pinpoint it because there's so much variety with wood, everything I've been talking about. But those are the circumstances where wood would be super beneficial for you. Again, to recap, if you have free wood, access to free wood, even if you're paying for wood, if you're on propane or oil or just uh, old efficient electricity, that might be a good option for you as well. Now let's talk lifestyle. Unless you have like a overnight burn going and you already have a hot firebox and all you have to do is throw a couple logs in there, um, it just takes more work. You know, you have to clean out ash, you have to make sure you have a hot fire, make sure you have a draft going. Um, there's a lot of steps involved with it. So uh, it's not the easiest to use and out of all the categories we're talking about, I would say uh, it's not the most difficult. We're gonna get to that one in a minute, but it's pretty close. Um, it's definitely the most amount of maintenance and paying attention to what you're doing a little bit. Um, so wood definitely has a lot of great benefits, um, but it also has a couple negatives as well that we just highlighted. So hopefully that helps answer the question for wood on specifically how it heats. Now remember, we're not talking install, we're not talking aesthetics. If you want to get a breakdown of that, we'll include links below to check out our other videos. All right, should we move on to gas or electric? Electric. All right, let's go in the electric room. All right, so we're in the electric room. Now let's talk electric heat. Um, what are we starting with? I'm getting confused, Chris. We're starting with the ability to whole home heat. Out of all the categories, electric heat is probably the least powerful, if that makes sense. What I mean by that is it has the, the smallest ability to heat a large space. So this is the Dimplex Ignite XL. It's our best heater, and I'm gonna put the heat gun on it in a minute and talk to you about that a little bit as far as its ability to heat. Um, I would say, in theory, you could whole home heat with electric fireplaces if you have a mega solar home and you can afford to put one of these in every single room. I'm kind of getting into costs and efficiencies a little bit, so we'll, we'll sort of digress a little. Let's pause that. Should we press the pause button on that? Pause it. Let's pause that. Okay, let me get back. So in theory, no. The ability to whole home heat just isn't there. So wood stoves, gas fireplaces, we'll talk about in a little bit, even pellet. Um, you're talking tremendous, tremendous BTU output, up to 70, 80,000 BTU output um, with those options. This is our best heater, and right now the technology is here for 10,000 BTUs. So this is hooked up to 220, which gives us the extra heat ability, but we're still only at 10,000 BTUs. I would say 800 square foot max. And it's just, like it feels good, it's hot, but here's our heat gun on it. And I'm getting about buck 85, buck 87 in there. So, I mean, it's heating, but wood stoves and, and some of the other heat sources, you can be almost a thousand degrees, a thousand degrees. This is a hundred some. So just the power to pack a punch just isn't quite there with electric. Okay. Let's talk about, what is that? So that takes care of ability to whole home heat. Let's talk costs out of these categories. Electric is probably the most, the least, the most least. <laughs> it's the least efficient of them. The cost to operate is going to be the most expensive. Unless, unless, and then remember, this is dependent on your particular lifestyle. My needs are different than your needs. Like I said, if you're on solar and you're, you have enough power to supply the home with your solar panels, then obviously this is gonna be extremely cost effective to heat with. And that's why a lot of people, when they have a whole solar home, they'll do all electric in the house, electric furnace, electric, you know, what else heats with electric cooktop, I guess you could say. Uh, so this would be no different. So if you're solar, then obviously it's extremely efficient to run electric fireplaces. And in theory, you could put one in every room and heat that way, but it just doesn't quite pack the punch 
of the other heaters. Now I will say this going with solar, I would say with electric heat in the future, this category has the most amount of momentum shifting to the ability to heat with this. Right now, the technology is not there, but in some areas in California, um, natural gas, fossil fuels are already 100% banned. So electric really is your only route. So we're gonna see this technology develop, I think rapidly over the years, but at this time of this video, the technology isn't there for it to pack a huge punch. But in theory, I guess you could heat a whole home if you have a ton of solar panels. But if you have no solar panels, I would not recommend using this as a primary heat source. I would recommend it in a room with supplemental heat, but definitely don't use it as a main heat source. It just doesn't have the ability to be a main heat source. <clears throat> All right, let's talk lifestyle. From a lifestyle or convenience standpoint, it's the complete opposite of wood. You literally do nothing. Here's how you turn the heater on and off. This is how we create heat with an electric fireplace. Really get in here, Chris, because I'm going to show you guys a trick to this. This is how you generate heat with an electric fireplace. Watch. Off. No more heat. Oh, are you getting, are you getting chilly, Chris? You getting a little cold? No. Yeah, you're getting cold, right? I guess so. Yeah, you're getting cold. You want some more heat? Oh, okay, yeah. Let's see how fast okay. it happens. Boom. Now you have heat. That easy. That's it's that simple. Is. Instant heat. Electric, there's no fire that needs to heat up, nothing. It's just boom, boom. I mean, if you need heat to generate faster than electric heat, you might wanna talk about loosening up your schedule a bit. You know, you're running a little tight, I think. Uh, maybe find a way to take a break and enjoy, enjoy your heater a little bit. So that, that is obviously the biggest benefit with electric heat is uh, you're gonna get the easiest from a lifestyle standpoint. It's on and off and it's instant. Like this heater starts heating up I would say in less than two or three seconds. That's how fast you're getting, <laughs> you're getting heat. So it's definitely the most convenient and easy to use. Like I said, if you have short mornings where you can just have a quick cup of coffee, you wanna enjoy a little heat by the fire, electric heat's a good option for that. Now again, we're not talking aesthetics because that's a whole nother category. You can watch the video, we're strictly talking heat. Um, I think that's it as far as uh, heat goes with electric. Am I missing anything, Chris, that you didn't think of? I don't think so. All right, should we move on to gas? Go. All right, let's go talk gas fireplaces. Okay, now let's talk gas. Now, I know we're not talking aesthetics or anything here, but a little side note, there's a new fireplace we installed by Mendota. How awesome is this thing? What do you think, Chris? Is it pretty? Looks good. One of my favorite fireplaces. All right, I digress. I've been saying that a lot. I never say that. Uh, <laughs> ability to whole home heat. Let's get on track. A lot like wood, Gas does have the ability to heat your entire home. Now, like wood, remember we talked about wood, you can have an open firebox uh, and those are no good. Gas fireplaces are the same thing. If you have an open B vent unit, no good. Um, if you're gonna do some base grade gas fireplaces that are more decorative, that are super inefficient, We'll include a link below so you can see the difference. But there are fireplaces like the brand Mendota here that are designed really as powerhouse mega heaters. This thing is just scorching hot right now. Um, I'm on fire. So this thing has the ability to heat like wood. It packs a big punch. I grab my heat gun here. So heat radiating through the glass right now. We're at 480, 490. I mean, we're hitting 500. So. 500 degrees of instant heat in the room, I think that'll do the job. I mean, just speculating here, but I think that can take care of you. Like wood, we can heat small spaces, we can heat large spaces. We have the ability to turn them way down or turn them way up. Really, really cool. All right, let's talk costs. Again, dependent on your lifestyle. If you're on propane, these can be run on propane or natural gas not very cost effective. Some people still do it though, because that's all they have. And we have a lot of customers that buy these and run them on propane. So I'm not totally discouraging it. I'm just telling you from a cost standpoint, it's gonna cost you a lot more than natural gas. Now I'm not talking specific costs because depending where you're at in the country, this is gonna vary quite a bit. Um, here in Colorado, natural gas is relatively affordable. It's not that much money. So if you're running natural gas, 
it's definitely a very, very efficient way to heat your home because you're, you know, here in Colorado, we run forced air gas furnaces. So it's just the same as your gas furnace. In fact, it's gonna be a little bit cheaper than a furnace because we have instant radiant heat in the room while simultaneously using less BTUs. That's one of the benefits of a gas fireplace versus gas furnace, but that's a totally different video, which we're gonna make shortly. All right, so here's the best part about gas when it comes to them being whole home heaters in our whole home heater section. Remember how we talked about wood, you're totally off the grid and you're not dependent on other suppliers or your, your utility company. Here's what's so cool about natural gas is you'll have to check with who you buy it from, but majority of gas fireplaces have battery backup, which means they can run without power. Now you're still dependent on your natural gas supply or your propane supply, but in theory, you don't need power to run these. And the only thing you lose is maybe some night light, uh, some blowers, but these nice units really heat predominantly radiantly. So you're gonna be able to heat a space with absolutely no power, which is a huge awesome plus with gas fireplaces. I would say, in general, now I know some of you guys are gonna blast me, oh, you, you know, quarter wood costs this much. Okay, fine, fine. In general, these are generalities. You guys don't have to blast me for very specific, isolated incidents where you live. In general, natural gas is roughly the cost of a quart of wood. If you do the calculations, they're very, very similar. So from a cost standpoint, if you're paying for wood, natural gas, you're gonna spend about the same, if that makes sense. Now there are occasions where that's not true, but in general, that's true. So that's cost for you a little bit on gas fireplaces. Now let's talk uh, lifestyle, ease of operation. Here's what's so cool about gas, and I think why gas is our best selling category, our best selling fuel type. And the reason is, is you're sort of getting the best of both worlds. You're getting all the benefits, or not all, but a lot of the benefits of the wood burning category and a lot of the benefits of the electric category. So the difference being, you know, how wood, super, super powerful, but super annoying to start, maintain, all that stuff. Electric was the exact opposite. Not very powerful, but super, super easy to control, turn on and off, start your fires, very low maintenance. Gas is right in the middle. It's uh, super powerful like wood, but also has almost all the ease of use features as electric. The only difference is, is this will take about five minutes to start feeling heat come out of the glass versus five seconds. <laughs> Again, if you need that huge gap between five minutes and five seconds, it's time to loosen up your schedule. <laughs> and much like electric, your, your remote controls that you have for these are your thermostats. So I can put this in thermostat mode, set it across the living room or whatever, and I'm gonna have full controllability of the way my house heats, just like my furnace would. And I'm gonna get all the easy features of turning it on and off. So again, how to turn a fire, gas fireplace on and off and how to control your heat, pop that off. It's off. Now that you're still gonna feel, on a gas fireplace, you're still gonna feel heat uh, for five minutes or so, uh, maybe longer if you have a Mendota. You wanna turn it back on, just press the on button. So if you come down for your morning cup of coffee, turn your coffee pot on, flip this guy on, by the time your coffee is done brewing, you're gonna have heat and you can sit down, read the news for 15, 20 minutes and enjoy a hot fireplace. Lifestyle, definitely pretty awesome. And that's why it's so many people go for it is because we get all the power of wood and all the ease of use like electric. Also, side note, this thing is pulling all of its own fresh air through the piping system. So it's not messing with any combustion air in the house or anything like that. So again, very, very popular choice. All right, let's talk pellet now. All right, now we're talking pellet. I'm in my office because I thought it'd be a lot easier with pellet to pull up a diagram and sort of go over this diagram together here to really explain how pellet heat works. Okay, so let's talk um, power or the ability to hold home heat. There are some pretty powerhouse pellet stoves and um, they do have the ability to heat a big space. Here's why I personally would stay a, lean against pellet as being like the only heat source in the house. Um, even though it has power to do it, um, they are probably our least reliable out of the categories. And we're gonna break that down 
more when we get into the lifestyle thing, but essentially you can see um, we have multiple blowers. We have an auger motor, which is spinning our pellets, dropping them into a burn pot. We have an igniter. All those things require power. So in a power outage, this won't work. Gas fireplace will work. Wood stove will work. Uh, but electric and pellet are the two options that really won't work without power. So it's not great because it requires power, but there's more than that. We have so many moving parts here that the number one service calls we get are on pellet stoves, whether they're pellet insert or pellet stove. Um, we ha can have a lot of jams. We can have failed igniters. We can have failed blowers, failed control boards. So even if you have reliable power, there's nothing worse than like an auger jam um, when it's five degrees outside. That's terrible. <laughs> Nobody wants that, right? So I wouldn't count on it as a, re as a main heat source. As a supplemental heat source, I think it's awesome. So that's why I would kind of steer away from it as a primary heat source. So that's the primary heat source. Let's talk cost to operate. Again, cost to operate is fairly subjective and it's gonna depend on your area, how many pellets you're buying at a time. If you're buying pallets for the multiple winters, you're obviously gonna get a better deal. Um, in general, it's a little bit more expensive than cordwood. And unlike wood, you don't really have a free option unless you know how to make homemade pellets. I don't know how, <laughs> but essentially you have to buy your fuel. Um, so cost to operate, I would say, is a little bit more expensive than if you're paying for cordwood. Again, kind of like natural gas, right? In that sort of natural gas line. All right, let's talk about lifestyle. Now, this is why I would say <sighs> pellet is our least favorite category because we do get some of the convenient features. We can turn them on uh, and keep them on a thermostat and they're just gonna do their thing. But here's why I, I'm not really crazy about them is you get some of the convenience features of gas and electric as far as them cycling themselves on and off, but you still have to store and stack pellets and you have to physically load pellets into your hopper right here. So it does take more maintenance. Let's say you're tired and you're trying to drink a cup of coffee and your hopper's empty. Well, then you gotta go out to the garage or wherever your pellets are, fill this back up. It's still an easier step than wood, but we still have high maintenance with relatively easy uh, controls for thermostat, but it's still not nearly as good as gas or electric. Now here's why I don't like it the most, like everything I said. So we see air is drawn into our burn pot. Now, usually with pellet stoves, there'll be a blower in here somewhere and that's gonna push oxygen into the burn pot to get your fire going. And that's gonna ease off, depending on the temperature of the room, it's either gonna push more, more air, mirror, ah. <laughs> it's either gonna push more air in if you need it to get hotter, and then it's gonna back that fan off if you don't need it to be as hot. So you have a fan here, then we're gonna have a fan that's going up here and you see this cold air is gonna catch here, it's gonna catch our hot fire, and then push the hot air out here. So we got two different fans, two different electrical fans running. Then we have an auger motor. So the pellets are gonna hit the auger, and depending on how hot it needs to be, that auger is gonna speed up and drop pellets into your burn pot. Then once it's in your burn pot, then we have an igniter that's gonna literally ignite the flame. So we have two blowers, an igniter, an auger motor and a control board. So we have five pieces of electronics, five pieces of electronics near high heat, five pieces of electronics near dust. That much electronics near dust and high heat to me is an absolute recipe for a disaster. And there's nothing worse when it's cold outside and you're, and you're on the run and then your wife calls you and tells you that the pellet stove isn't working. I mean, does that sound like a nightmare? I don't want to mess with that. Do you, Chris? I'm single. <laughs> well, you just get go home to busted pipes then, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, I guess that's true. Either way, it's not good. So here's what I'll say about this. You're not, the convenience you're going to save over wood is minimal. Like I said, though, there is a time and a place for this. Here's the example of where a pellet stove would be good. Now, let's say maybe you're getting elderly and you really just can't move around as much as you used to and, and starting a fire, maintaining a wood burning fires, just, you're just not capable of that anymore, let's say. 
um, but you're on propane or oil and you don't want to spend those type of costs to heat your home. Pellet is a good alternative in that standpoint because you do get some of the convenience factors of thermostat control. You don't have to bend down and start a fire. The only physical labor you have to do is fill the, bat, fill the hopper up with pellets. So that's a nice sort of compromise, I would say, with pellets. Or if you're away from the home a lot and you have to have something thermostat controlled and you just can't do electric or gas, this is where this comes in handy as well too. If you wanna see a live demo of wood versus gas, or wood versus pellet, I have a video down, be down below, we'll include links, you can watch that video. So that's sort of my spiel on pellets. Um, I'm not saying don't ever get one, it's just if you're gonna have one, you need to understand what's involved with operating it, and you need to have a service guy handy, or you yourself have to be really handy to be able to repair and fix some of the electronics that are 100% are gonna go wrong in these. 100 out of 100 times. I've never seen one without a part fail. Just my two cents. So there's pellet for you. Now, all this being said, I know you're out there. We have a lot of pellet fanboys that watch the channel. You guys are gonna light me up. I know you're gonna put me on blast about pellet. Easy there, pellet man. We know you love your pellets. I'm just saying it's not for everybody. But as long as you're educated and you know how to use it, you're good to go. All right, so there you have it. There's the four categories. Um, hopefully this video helps. I'm sure it's way too long. Super boring if you don't need to learn about these products, but hopefully that sort of helps clarify and answer some questions. And again, think about your needs and really cater what I'm telling you to your specific needs. And that should help you narrow down your choice. And then you can get into aesthetics, all that sort of stuff, ease of install, costs, all that kind of stuff. But again, we're talking strictly heat. And again, if you're in the Denver, Colorado, Colorado area, come to our showroom today, check out these products for yourself. Or again, you can uh, call or text our sales staff. Don't forget to subscribe. Stay tuned for more.